All right, we are live. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon to everybody from the East Coast and Central Time. Good morning to West Coast peoples. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Ken Miguel, and here with me is Mike Lugo. Mike, how are you doing? How's everybody doing this morning? And we hope uh, we're finding everybody well and healthy, as well as your families. Um, so for, we're here today to do a webinar on an excellent uh, solution. It's a solution that's in demand in today's market. Uh, we are going to do a deep dive on this Bolide BN 2600 ACTC access control camera with facial recognition and body temperature reading. Uh, you guys will see on your screen there's a questions box so we're gonna go, we're gonna go through the webinar and feel free to interrupt we're gonna be answering questions as we go along uh, we're gonna uh, essentially show you guys how this product works uh, we're gonna do uh, what do you do what uh, out of the box basic setup uh, we're gonna look at the hardware um, we're gonna look at setting this up with an existing access control system and even you know what to do with it integrating it with a camera system all right mike i never thought the day would come where i would need to wear a mask when i go buy bananas at the grocery store yes but crazy times but uh, we're living in a weird time um and you know these times require us to adjust. So these uh, body reading temperature um, or body temperature reading solutions are some all, all of a sudden something that is essential in a lot of places, right? So a lot of markets, this solution can be sold to. Business owners are now concerned about um, who enters you know who enters their facilities um not letting sick people in you have i, I we made a list of vertical markets for this you know uh, offices you know um airports you know the, the terminals um hotels um factories the workers you know not letting sick sick uh, workers in uh, hospitals, of course, uh, can use some of these solutions. Schools. Oh, yeah. All the schools shut down, but I'm sure something will be put in place for the the following school year to regulate, you know, viruses from spreading or minimize it. Um, retail stores, small businesses, apartments. Uh, There's just so many. There's so many. And this solution is something that could be uh, put in on a small scale. It could be one unit and it can also be put in on a larger scale basis. Um, it is essentially a an access control device, um, but it's also a camera and it's also body temperature reader. It's so easy to use. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's gonna Mike, blow your mind. Yeah, Mike will, will show us the, the operation um for this unit and it yeah you guys will find that it's it's super it, it's very, very simple to learn and to set up okay so what are what are the benefits of this product right so we see this has having a couple of of main benefits you put this in a facility the end user might need it for both facial recognition why because they might be a company that's only letting essential people in or they're not letting non-employees in the building right so they'll, they'll be able to use that on top of that use the body temperature reading so even if you are an essential employee if you are registered with your face but you're sick you still can't get in right yep so that's one the other would be Putting in this places where the faces that will be entering, the people entering the place uh, are strangers, right? So even if they're not registered for facial recognition, you can still use the body temperature reader to not let sick people in. Yep. 
Okay. So of course we're going to go through both um, applications. Oh, and one more before I forget, mask and non-mask. This will also uh, detect. So if 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 you require, if the end user requires masked uh, people to be able to enter and they're not, then they're, the door won't unlock. Yep. That's especially important now. Everybody's got to be wearing masks and it's, it's a pretty cool feature. Yeah, here in Southern California, I think we were mm -hmm. mandated to wear masks when we go to public places. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go through it, well, one step at a time. And again, guys, there's a questions box there. Feel free to type in questions as we go along. All right, so let's look at the camera. Okay, Mike, it's a seven inch LCD. Seven inch LCD screen, okay. glass covered, glass over the top. Glass over the top, and you see the camera there. It's a 1080 camera. 1080 camera yeah. with mechanical WDR. Mechanical WDR. Okay. Yeah. So for glare, works really well. It's we got a four millimeter lens. Yep. And you'll see there the what you're actually going to see if you stand in front of it. Yep. Very clear picture. Okay. Let's look at the top part of this unit, right? So you see the light shining on the other picture. So they're LED lights to help with lighting. Yep. All right. So, uh, all right. And on the front, there's a couple of sensors. IR sensor for mm -hmm. the infrared um, detection. Camera sensor. Yep. And the temperature sensor is probably, you know, it's the most important uh, aspect of this, this camera. You know, the temperature sensor, it's, it's going to tell your temperature. That's why we have this camera out there. So a lot of sensors in this camera. So that's the reader. Yep. For the, all right. And the bottom has speakers and a lock, screw lock. Here's the back. This camera is very sturdy, too. It's all metal. Very heavy, very heavy duty. What, what's the material on it? It's, it's metal. Oh, okay. It's made of metal. Yeah, metal and heavy glass in the front. Okay, one question that we get asked is, is it a weather rated camera? So you don't want to get it soaked completely. You know, I think it's, um, yeah. So you can have it outside. Just don't go throw it in. They need to protect it from the elements. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay, so let's look at mounting this camera. You got a question here? Is it, is it IP rated? Yes. Yeah, I think the, IR, the IP rated is 59. So. Okay, yeah. so it comes with a mounting kit already in the box. And it's two pieces. Two pieces. It's very easy to. You can see it's four screws, very easy to install. So it's, a, it's essentially a plate with four screws that mounts to wall. And the camera slides on to just right into the place. front piece. Yeah. Does it have impact resistance, Mike? So, no, I would not say it's impact resistant. Yeah. Um, so you don't, we want to keep it safe. You want to keep it protected. Uh, like I said, the front is glass and it's very heavy. So it's not you want to keep it in a good safe place yeah the bracket the mounting bracket's pretty heavy duty um you're not gonna be able to rip this thing off the wall or anything like that but you do want to keep it in a nice safe place okay so that's the camera that's the mounting kit that comes in the box does it come with the power supply it does come with the power supply 12 volts three amps is the requirements so yeah okay is it a PoE? It's not PoE. Okay. It's not PoE. Um, hopefully we get PoE soon, but yeah, it's not PoE. Okay. So powering up by the first two steps. You got the cam the camera mounted. What do you do? So once the good thing about this camera is that it is a standalone, so you don't if you don't have network access to it, you can still use the camera, uh, the temperature settings and all that stuff. You do need 
network access to set it up, get everything right. Default, everything set up for you, but if you want to make minor changes, you're going to want to hook it up to a network. But power it up, comes on right, comes on right away. Uh, it's very user friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's essentially an IP camera. So we need to we need to put it to network. You do, yeah. You do want to put it on a network. It's not POE, but you do want to put it on a network. You got it to set it up. You are going to have to do that. Okay. Uh, I think we answered that question. Is the power supply included? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. It it comes with a a power supply. Yeah. Twelve volts, three amps. Three power. amp power supply. Okay, so let's go through operation. So we have the camera now connected to the network. How do you log into the camera? By the way, so you, you manage this camera in what ways? So you have, of course, the web GUI, and we do have a VMS for this. Um, the web GUI is probably the best way to get into it and do any kind of um, functions, stuff like that. Let me log out and log back in so you guys can see so you can do the whole process. So like any other ip camera type in my web address how do you find that so by default the address is going to be 192.168.1.88 of course our network is not a one dot network so once you change that you can make it your own and then go ahead and and enter it do you need to enable activex you do need to enable activex if those of you who've been in the industry for a while you know how that goes um, ActiveX, it's a little frustrating just enabling everything, but once you do, it's it's just like any other IP camera. And what browsers work with this? So, again, if you guys are familiar with CCTV IP cameras, it's always uh, Internet Explorer. And it's been that Internet way for a long Explorer. time. Okay, yep. so no uh, no Chrome, no Safari, Chrome, Safari. Yeah, I'm using Chrome. Safari. You guys can see that, but I have a I have a plugin that uses it's a ActiveX plugin for it. So oh, it's called IE tab. Yeah. So you can use it on Chrome. You, you can use it on Chrome, yeah. but it is ActiveX that is being used. Keep that in mind. So there's a live view of, of the camera. You can see we have a few different options here. You know, snapshot, record, um, call basically is just like a two-way audio type type of, of uh, situation from the PC. Um, listen, because it does have speakers on it. And then full screen um, with region. These are just going to change, you know, the way you look at the picture what was the uh, default password for it there's no default password so the first time you log in that's a good question the first time you log in it makes you enter a password a default password um and at that point you can you know add whatever you want i think it's uh, eight characters is the minimum yeah so let me... okay what is the distance maximum uh regarding the power supply so if you're running like any other power, you're going to start to lose as you get further. I tried a 100 foot extension with the three amp and it wasn't, uh, I needed something to push a little more. So you want to keep it close to the actual device. Okay. And I think the next question, we're going to go over this. So can we use snapshots from the camera itself to create face recognition access? Yes. Yes, you from can. Uh, or or from snapshots to create a database. Yeah, yes, you can. And we'll, we'll go over that right now, but yeah. definitely you can. Okay, so you log onto the camera. This is the first thing that you see, right? Yeah, this is your initial live view. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's add, yeah. let's add a face. So let's go over here to config. Let's go over, this is our basic interface. Um, local view, this is what you're seeing live, right? Um, we have some audio settings. Audio, okay, microphone, so it, compression, um, sampling of the audio, things like, of that so nature. Is audio enabled out of the box? It is. Audio is enabled out of the box, and the camera will talk to you and tell you if you're too far, too close. It'll tell you what your temperature is verbally. Uh, not is, but tell you if your temperature is okay. Um, and so this bottom. So, video settings, this is very. Um, common video settings with any IP camera, OSD, you can change what's on the screen, what you see live. Um, okay, the format, you can uh, adjust where you're- Where you want it to be. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, video coding, again, very simple. IP camera settings, you know, your coding, H.264, profile, um, rate of control, which is your bit rate control, bit rate, 
very common settings that you're going to see on any IP camera. You can most of the time just leave all this stuff default, but we're still going to go over it. So video parameters, um, how you want your image, you know, saturation, brightness, hue, things of that nature. Mirror, you can mirror the image, um, flip it, 3D noise reduction. Here's your uh, WDR strength. Remember, we did mention that the camera is WDR. Uh, okay. So let's go on to IR. IR detection, what level um, it's going to detect that at. Basically, IR settings. And advanced is going to be rotation of the camera, um, anti fog, white balance, basic uh, video settings. And then there's a picture area, which it's 1080 and JPEG. That's the common default setting. That's the images that it's saving. That's the images that it's saving. Snapshot file format yeah. and then the resolution of the images. Yep. So there's some network basic network settings. We'll go over them. As you can see here, it's pretty important that there is a OMVIF port. Normally, OMVIF is port 80. Um, this is port 2000, so it has its own OMVIF port. Yeah, we just got a question right now. Uh, if it's on with S or it is T S. compatible? It is S compatible. Yeah, okay. It is S. So you can take, you can add this to an MBR. Yes, yes. S means that, yeah, you can add to an MBR. Uh, we have another question. Uh, please explain WDR strength. So if you're familiar with WDR, it's highlight condition. So it's just basically you're going to get to choose or adjust how that picture looks in terms of um, the brightness that the forefront image is. If you increase it, your your picture is going to look brighter, lighter. Lighter, there you go. Yeah, lighter. lighter. So if that affects your accuracy, you may want to uh, scale it down. But if you're, if the background of where this camera is going to be installed is going to be uh, a lot of sunlight, a lot of glare, it's going to be bright behind the camera anyway so that's when you would need to turn up to the vdr yeah that's a, and that's a really important function with a camera like this because it you're going to have a lot of them in the front door light in the background is it a digital or or mechanical wdr mechanical mechanical wdr yeah. so yeah you want to keep that in mind those are your ports real important when you're trying to add it on to uh, your network yeah so if you mount the camera on the side of a door, does it angle towards the center of the door? So there's no angle adjustment. You have to have it, the camera facing dead on of what you're going to look at. Yeah, you, there's no angle adjustment on the actual bracket. Okay. Yeah, so if you mount it on the right or the left of a door, then you you definitely have to figure out a way to angle it to get the front. Well, th that plate that comes with it, yeah, you can screw that onto. Yeah. If you have a, a device that angles, then you can yep. Yep. work it like that, right? For sure. Yep. But yeah, you have to. The, this camera just mounts straight on. Just you know, if it's a TV mount, it's the one that does not swivel. Yeah. Yeah. So land settings, IP settings, you know, the DHCP setting make it real easy. But you know, most networks. Network guys, they want a static IP. You can set that there. PPPoE, we don't use that anymore, really. So that's kind of obsolete. UPnP, which is universal plug and play. Um, yeah, you can enable that if your if your network allows. Uh, email is important because email notification. Yep, email notification. Okay, this is a uh, an important so. Can it send an email instantly when there's a abnormal body temperature reading? So yeah, there's different ways to set up the alarm triggers. Um, two different ways. Uh, we'll go over them in more detail. But yeah, you can set up if it was high, if it was low, if someone was let in, if the access control function was enabled, stuff like that. Is it just one receiver? Just one receiver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there, that would be it there. FTP. Anybody who's familiar with FTP, this is a pretty cool function. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, you can do, it's a peace of mind, fail safe. Just have all your images set to another computer on the network. So, so you can do backup on, on the same. Yep. 
network. Um, DDNS does have a DDNS. Um, DDNS is coming more and more obsolete, but it is an option that's there. If you have a VPN set up and you need to get into it through, you know, another remote location, you can set up the DDNS. Uh, I'm sorry, VPN. RTSP. Those of you familiar with RTSP, this is a pretty cool function. If you want to have it even like on a um, public monitor, something like that, showing all the time, it's a cool thing to have. Uh, IP email, this is to enable. Do you want intervals of, of uh, snapshots being sent to you? You can do that. This is for future products that are coming. You know, if you have uh, multiple recorders with the server set up, this is where you would do it. Same thing here. This is for large scale projects. Um, yeah, it has a heartbeat function. So if one loses, it'll, it'll pick up kind of like a backup. All right. Basic network settings. So storage it has a a 15 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte um, memory inside to store those pictures. They don't go anywhere. And that's there. So it does it record video and pictures and the card? So it just does the pictures in the card. That's why we have the VMS and our our web GUI to set up how we want to record those images, or you can add it to an NVR. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a question here on the distance. We're going to go over once Mike has sets himself up, then we'll go over that. Yeah. Uh, what is what type of server is needed and operating system for the server? So that's a future. It's going to be probably Linux when it does come, when we do get those those uh, products, more okay. than likely. Yeah. So let's go into some alarm settings. And this is why the camera is what it is. Very simple. This is a simple motion setting. Um, it's going to detect motion like any other camera. Um, you can see there's an email and output. It can also trigger um, your access control if you want to do that. But more importantly, you know, this is more of a, a sensor camera rather than just motion. So your sensor link is just probably one of the most important aspects of this camera. So the camera has, for access control, also has a alarm in and out so you can change that stuff here depends how you want to use the camera as mary went over earlier there's many different functions and ways to use the camera all that stuff's going to be in here your settings um to go with your access control and of course the network settings again it's just going to tell you if there's problems with the network send you an email stuff like that uh this doesn't really pertain to us this is for rs 45, we're not using that. So system info, basic, you know, uh, firmware, things like that. System time, user management. How many users can be set up? Uh, is so it just one admin or? One admin and two additional users. Okay. All right. Yeah, no. Yep. Uh, your password, if you need to do firmware updates, this is where you would do it. Okay. Um, it's not a PTZ, but if you wanted to restore defaults, there's another good one. If you want need to back up any settings, or if you have multiple um, devices, you can back it up and then just import it into other devices rather than have to go through all these settings all over again. That's pretty cool. You can reset the camera from the web GUI, and of course, a system log that's going to give you it's going to log everything. So let's get to the fun part. We've got all that stuff done. So here's our our smart analytics this is what does the face this is what does the temperature all of our settings first one is video mask this is just a mask off areas that you don't want to be seen or detected very common uh this is the temperature area that you want the camera to detect kind of like a um, motion detection you set the area that you want the motion to detect same thing here where do you want the camera to detect um temperature so of course we just do the whole the whole screen smart face detection so this is important so by default they're set to optim optimal settings you don't really want to come in here and mess with anything we're going to go through the settings smart anyway face is what like how, how would you so that? yeah it's usually like it's a face setting like face settings facial smart. recognition settings yeah exactly okay. and how it's going to detect those those uh those settings so 
of course, there's a time you can have two schedules, sensitivity, snap mode, single mode. That's, what we're, that's the only setting you have there. So capture times. Um, how many times it's going to capture a picture to enter into the database, right? Or and then what? per, so how many frames per second? So you went 30 frames oh, okay. per second, you know? Um, and then, so you have it set, we have it set by default to catch every fifth frame, right? So the fifth frame out of a 30 frame per second video is what it's going to take that snapshot as. Um, face recognition, maximum pixel, maximum pixel detection and minimum pixel detection. This is the size of area that's going to detect the face. So if you're further away, of course, you want to have detect smaller pixels. This camera is the type of camera you have to be up close to it. So we have it set pretty high. The maximum is 500 and our face minimum is going to be 160 rather than 30. 30 is pretty small. Like I said, all this is optimal default out of the box. You don't really have to mess with these, but in some cases you might have to do some adjustments. Um, Face detection scene. So, lobby scene is most common. You're going to have these things in the lobby type area. Um, the conventional scene is more of a wide open area. They detect the same way. Um, the face scene detection is more of a, a exposure type setting. So, lobby is less light. Uh, conventional scene is a real bright area. There's not a lot of shade. That's what that setting is. Um, filter tracking, you want that on because you're tracking, it's gonna filter all these settings that you put in. If it's off, it's not gonna take any of these filters. Um, FTP upload, talked about that. You can open, close, on, off. Uh, image type, face picture or face and original picture. So if you upload a picture, um, is it gonna take that is that going to take precedence over the face that it's detecting at the camera? It's just a All right. setting out of there. Face quality, you always want max. Um, filter tracking, you always want that. That's something you always want on. You don't want to turn that off because then it's not going to detect, you know, what the camera does. Live detection, same thing. You want it on. If you're setting filters, you want that. You want that always like that. And then um, function first. Again, leave these things there, set up for you, very easy. Access control, you can see there's only three options in access control. This thing is very easy. I'm not an access control guy, and it makes me feel like I am. It's so easy to use. So it's Wigan. Wigan, which is the most common yeah. access control protocol. And it's Wigan, uh, what is it, 21 and 36. Those are the two protocols that it does yeah. use. We'll show you guys the 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 yeah. wires coming out of the camera. But yeah, we'll there's an alarm in and out, a weekend in and weekend out yep. as part of the package. Yep. Um face region. Again, this is the area that it wants to detect the de face detection. The other one was heat that you want area you want. This one's face. And of course, by default, all this stuff is set for you. You don't really want to make it a smaller area to detect. So list management. This is where you can upload or take from the camera. You have the option here to take a snap, which is going to take it live from the camera, or you can import from the computer. That's real easy. The easiest way to do this is to import a picture. Okay, we have, we have a question here. So do you take a picture from the camera or do you upload one? If they sell this to a, a, a business owner, yeah, they want to upload their employees. Let's say they already have ID pictures or they want to take pictures of everybody. Yeah. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. Take individual, individual pictures of everybody. You can upload them all at the same time. You can, I'll go over the structure of how to, you have to enter a name, an employee ID, and an ID card. So if you have that stuff already in the picture, it's been, all your work is done okay. for you. Is it more accurate? For? If, if I upload an image oh, yes. versus yes. Com image coming from the camera. For sure. If you upload that image, it's way more accurate than getting it from the camera. Okay. For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go. You want to do one now? Or? Yeah, we can do one now, or I can show you how to do the upload um, process. We can do so. It's grab one of these. Very easy. So all right. So let's uh, all right. Let's. So you're you're taking a JPEG from your computer. Yeah, yep. And I got to give it a name. That's not Manny. 
So there, give it an ID. All right. And I can add it to the whitelist or the VIP list. Very easy. It's adding, bam. And then the next, our next screen, which is the, there it is. So That's that a easy. allow list. It's the allow list, yeah. Um, so this would be like this would be their people. This would be their people. Okay. So I can see how easy that was to upload a picture. Um, yeah. Another question: Can you bulk import? Yes, you can. You can do it through the VMS, and I'll go over that in a bit. Um, is there a blacklist? There's a blacklist. There's a blacklist as well. Okay. Um, here's only the VIP list and the white. So if you're not on the white list or the VIP list, you're on the blacklist. Basically, how it goes. so for retail, can they also scan guests? Yes. Without a photo? Yes. 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 Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Yep. So that's a list. Very easy to upload a picture. Um, this is alarm settings. So whitelist, VIP list, non-whitelist alarm, any of those things you can, this is where you would get your um, your input output um, triggers would be here. Uh, you can also set time periods. This is also your temperature threshold. Um, by default, of course, it's going to be set for you already the optimal temperature. You can adjust that. This is also where you can set if you want to detect a face, if you want to detect temperature, or do you want to do face and temperature. Also is the mask setting. Right now I have it set to on. This is where it will detect if someone is wearing a mask or not and allow them to enter the location if they're not wearing a mask or if they are. So having the I/O setting here, you can set you can set it to send an alarm output to an, another device. Another device to go off to let to let notify the end, the, the yep. user. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. So so there's another question: Is can it be detected through a glass or a window? So faces, yes. Temperature, no. Okay. Through, That's through a, a good glass. Question, yeah. yeah. Through a glass. Um, on so can you can does it does it does it keep a database of captured faces let's say it's in retail yes so guests are coming yes can you go back and dig through those and then put them on a black on a on, a, on the vip list so or block list it works it'll detect all those faces then you got to export that list and then once you export it then you can import it into your database so when you can go through each picture and you know do what you want with them and i'll show you you guys how to how to do that right now. Um, okay. But yeah. All right, let's keep it on. We'll, we'll answer the question as we go. So let's go into this here is just basically, as Ken said, it's going to give you all the pictures of everybody it's that it's taken, whether it doesn't matter if they're on a list, and it'll also give you your temperature. Of course, yeah, it's not, I haven't had it set up to detect everybody, but this is where it would be. Um, it does have an attendance record. So it'll tell you um, someone's been late. You can use it as a as attendance record for your company if you want to see if somebody's being late, if they're here. You know, a lot of the new AI cameras have this function. Uh, and of course, version info and device information if you want to log that information for your, if you have multiple. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you see here there was an alarm. You can see the little alarm's been going off. And, It'll give me all the alarms, motion, whatever happened, whitelist alarm. This will tell me everything that happened throughout, you know, whatever duration that I'm searching. Okay. So let's go back here. What are you going to show? Uh, have you do the scan? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to enter the database first and then I'll show you guys how it works. Okay. Um, Let's go into show you guys the VMS now. Okay, so I so the browser for single, if you have multiple, then you can use the VMS software. Correct, correct. So okay, we'll go back to this PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, so that is the wire outputs. Yep. Right. So you have your alarm out. Well, you have your, your uh, RJ45. Uh, your 12 volt and vegan in and out. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's do, um, let's show us the VMS. So, okay. 
and do, and we want to show you um, or allow we want to show have the camera allow you in. Yeah. So they, they can see what it actually does. Just put my VMS up over here. Okay, so that's the VMS that they, this comes included with the camera. Yes. So, so I'll log in. I'm gonna log into this. So you see, it's very simple. Um, doesn't look too complicated. And again, just like our our web GUI, I can come here. There's my live video. Um, it'll show the snapshots as they. Let me just look at it real quick. Does it detect me? Wear a mask, please. As you can see there, I'm not wearing my Wear mask. mask please. So all right. Wear a mask, please. We have Wear a question mask, here. Please. If if they're wearing a mask, if the people wearing masks, are they going to be recognized by the facial recognition? So yeah, you can see right now that I wasn't wearing my mask and it's telling me to wear my mask. So, but so it's it's it does detect with the mask. It does it, yeah. <laughs> um, your mask? Yeah, so let's see. Put my mask on, go back to this. Stand closer, please. Temperature is normal. So pass, please. All right, so you can pass. Yeah. Okay, how, how far did you need to be in front of the to be in front of the camera? So the distance is 0.3 meters to 0.8 meters is what you want to get. That's the ideal ideal range. So and how fast does it detect a, a face? So the, the face detection is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. It detects it very fast. Uh, so let's do some face. Let's enter some faces into here. Huh? Let's do an import. I want to import multiple faces at once. So I'm gonna select my folder. Am I registered on the on the camera? Am you, I registered? No, I don't have anybody on there right now. So it would not let me in. It would not let you oh. in. Yeah. So let's do faces. Let's select my folder, and then I can select where I want to import them to. So there it goes. It's importing multiple faces. So the folder that I selected on purpose, I put four pictures in there, and I put two of them that didn't meet the requirements. I'll go over the requirements in a second. Um, and I wanted it to. I wanted to show you guys that it doesn't. If you don't meet the requirements, it's not going to allow. So I've got two good, two bad. I'm going to go to my list. I, I don't want... think they can see your screen. Oh, let me see. There we go. There we go. So let's go back real quick. So you can see that uh, I tried to import four of them. Two of them were good. Two of them were bad. I did that on purpose so you guys can see that you have to meet the requirements. So have them show. Go back to. Okay, we'll do yeah. it again. <laughs> we'll do it again later. There it goes. So I already added two, so then that's going to fill out. But so now I want to go to my list. I'll choose the camera again. Choose the device. There it is. So those are my faces that I just added. Added three at one time, um, and I did it like this on purpose. So you got to meet the requirements of what the camera needs for a face, which is the name, their number. Um, and then it'll add it. So now I have faces in the database. Um, it's that simple. That simple to add a face. Very easy. Let's go over to. So if you have multiple devices and you have this software, you can you can push all the photos and let's say I have fifty of these deployed. Yep. You can do. Can you do your settings all from one, yep. one shot? All from one shot. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, let's do a. Actually, I'm gonna go back here now. I'm gonna add. Go back and, and have your face detected. Yeah, I'm gonna add my face now. Okay. So I'm gonna do that one. So if 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 they were if they're wearing masks, should they upload a picture of that person wearing a mask? You don't have to. That's what's that's what's awesome about this. You don't have to upload a picture of somewhere. I'm wearing a mask in this picture, but um, you don't have to upload a mask picture. You can do regular picture, enter the mask setting, and it will it'll find it. How many faces will it allow? So 2,000, 2,000? 22,000. 22,000. Um, a lot of faces. You have 16 gigs to work with with little tiny face pictures. So it holds a lot of pictures. 
Um, so I got to give myself. So if you upload in bulk, you don't have to enter all this information, which the camera needs in order to, to allow you to to um, to enter things. So it's importing that picture. Can you name the device? You can. Building one, building two. You can. Okay. You can. That was that last uh, setting in the camera when I was in the GUI. Okay. Yeah. So now I want to do another search. There it is. So now I'm on there, right? So I got to wear my mask because I have the mask setting on. All right. Can you go have them make sure they make sure they see the yeah temperature is normal pass please all right stand closer please temperature is normal pass please there you go so all right so now it recognizes me that that would let me in will it not let me in so yeah it's not gonna let Wear mask, please. Wear mask, please. Wear mask, please. Temperature is normal. So I have, please. The, I have the setting of just temperature right now. Oh, anybody can get in. Anybody okay, can get so in. this will be retail. I'm a, yeah. They don't know me. I'm, yeah. But I can get in. I can get I'm, in. I'm wearing a mask and yep. my temperature. Yep. Good thing to know I'm not sick. <laughs> so let's go back here so we had another question so yeah a snapshot from the unit was what i just added i had to add the name i do that from here if i want to do individuals um okay so yeah what he so this image right here is from the device yes yes so so how do you dig for your for your image so yeah that's that's a good question so let's go through uh let's go through our this management what we can do attendance well, first, let's do this. This is the people counting really quick since I'm here. So let's do people count. I can do the different. So 36 people. And I can do different lists. Um, yeah. And then the attendance, of course. I can do statistics or uh, record uh, recording. I can do from the device. And I can also do local. Right. So if I wanted to do, there's all the different, of course, there's no pictures because they're not, not in the database. It's all strangers. If I did device, took all the faces out. The device not going to have anything because we haven't done anything yet. But oh, there it does have all the different strangers. We just added pictures. So the pictures aren't, weren't there when they took this. But yeah, very simple to use. They're easy to use. Um, as far as records, they can hold 1,000 records, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's that, that answers that how many pictures can it hold? Oh, yeah. It's not an operation. Yep. So what else is, is, it, what is it? What is needed for a community temperature reading in the time and control line with four smiles? Another question. Uh, okay. So let's just. Um, so device management, so, so this is like we said, it's for multiple devices. Um, if I had more. Oh, that's a good question. Can you change to Fahrenheit? Yes. Yes. By the time the webinar is over, it will be able to read in Fahrenheit. So if I had a bunch of these cameras on my network, they would all show up here. I can search them or I can add them manually. And this allows me to control all these different devices and you would see them here under this list. We only have one, but just like any other CMS, VMS, always on that left side, you see all of your devices and then you can go in and and you know do what you need to do with them uh let's go back to home okay so that was the device manager multiple devices next would be our configuration so most of the configuration you do is done in the gui even though this vms allows you to do uh, multiple cameras in the end let me double click here you can see okay so there's my settings that i have set i can do stream settings area settings you know perimeter settings but if i want to do any major changes to the camera there is a go to web button right here and it takes you to the web gui so like like i said in the beginning most of the functions and everything you can do is done in the camera itself 
uh, the VMS is just for managing all the different cameras that you have. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So the 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 you want to see adding pictures from the the, the unit. Well, he, he, yeah. So yeah. that picture was from the unit. Yeah. The last one that you added, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was something that was from the unit. So you just you had, needs the name. Um, and yeah, he picked it up number. from the storage. Yeah. Okay. Is there how many cameras that can be managed? No, no. You, as long as you have, it's on the it's on the network. You're gonna be able to pick it up. Okay. So yeah. um, we're gonna we're gonna go to the the wiring diagrams. Yeah. Um, but you can you can set up uh, local storage on your VMS, right? Oh, for sure. So so if you want to record videos into this computer that we're using. Yes. Well, how, how do you what do you do? So we're gonna go to settings. So, so settings. If if you don't have an NBR, let's say you didn't add it add it on. I want to record my camera into this computer that I'm using right yep. now. Yep. So you have a snap path, a uh, download path, and a picture path. This is gonna be all your recordings will be set through here. Um, Auto Snap is going to save all the directly to your computer. Uh, local record, how long you want this to record. Once it detects a face or temperature or whatever, how you have it set up, how long do you want it to record for? We set that here in, in terms of minutes. What it's are your set, limits there? You know? uh, I think it's one through 99. Okay. Yeah. Which, yeah, you don't really want to record that long. Is there a limit to how many devices can be managed on this, on this VMS? No no limit no okay yeah um and then set alarms you have an audio um actually coming out of the computer can the camera be used with a non bolide vms yes uh it's on diff compliant so you add it as an on diff device to that vms yeah the vms allows on diff for sure yeah. yeah and of course there's a log it's going to log everything that that goes on with the device or devices for that matter okay so let's go back to so we show the basic camera functions, the the menu interface from the browser and from the VMS. Correct. Right. Okay, let's go on to the next phase. Wiring this up. And we get a lot of questions uh, as far as wiring this up. So, so yeah. how do you how do you get the camera to interact with uh a lot of time, you know, they have existing card reader systems already in place and an, an access control system already in place. Yep. And so yes, it's very, the protocol is, is universal protocol, most popular in any access control device. And it's three wires. So you have data zero, data one, and a ground. That's it. Very easy to use. Very straightforward. Anybody's doing access control, know what I'm talking about. Anybody who doesn't know access control, it's very easy to use. Uh, most access controls have the label of what pin, what wire goes where. As long as you can read the board, you should be good. Yeah, yeah. So you have this is the leads coming at the camera. Yeah. We have your weekend out and weekend in. Yep. Then you have the alarm output, and yep. you can utilize those for the triggers. Yep. So this scenario is just using the weekend out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next scenario. Now you yeah. So if you have if you have a camera system, or if you want to sell this with a camera system, let's say you put this at a, at the at the entrance, and you you want to install a camera facing the entrance where the camera is, you can have the alarm in and out. Yep. Connect to the NVR, mm -hmm. and have a trigger recording when there's a trigger from the VN twenty six hundred. Yep. And with that, you can get all kinds of different notifications to your phone because now you're using Bolide and Quick Connect and you know you have way more options. You can integrate it and have a lot more functionality. Yeah, what are weekend data is being sent? So it's just it's just gonna be basic data, zero, zero and one. That's it. Zero and one? Zero and yeah. one. Yep. Uh distance option actually digital wiring, AC wires to control board. So distances are going to be they're they're going to be universal. I think it's 500 feet, 300 feet, 200 feet. Yep. 
Okay, now the scenario is okay. So we have this camera. It's it's the B and eighty thirty five F. It's got two way audio with a built in speaker and mic on the camera. Yep. So you can have this camera via the alarm in and out trigger the NVR to notify the user via email notification or push notification right from the NVR, and they can now go to the camera and have a pretty much intercom system. They can talk back and forth with a person at the door you know, yeah this camera has a built-in speaker and mic already so yep. why not yep yeah so yeah you got someone who's not allowed in you can go ahead and have a verbal conversation with them and you know find out what's going on okay and most importantly it acts uh the the a card reader systems yes so uh the device has in and out so this is the way the wiring would go for the in and out going to your rf it also has a usb um input on it that's four card readers. Can you elaborate on this diagram? Yeah. So, of course, just like the other diagram, access control board is where your out's going. And then you can have the input going from the our card reader or whatever kind of card reader you're using. You can use uh, um, thumbprint reader, whatever it is. It allows you to integrate it into the camera and then out to the access control, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And what would, would it? So the scenario would be if there's an existing card reader, they they want they want to limit the even the functionality of the card reader. Yes. Right. So they want to yes. be able to make sure the person is either allowed or have a normal body temperature, exactly. and then have the card reader work. Yeah. So it's another layer of of protection you can add to it. You need to have the card. You need to have the face. You need to have the mask, and you need to have the right temperature to get in. So it's four layers of of uh, access control. Yeah. Okay. So we're pretty much done. So we're, we're just, we're just going to open it up for more questions. Um, again, this this solution is excellent for really any any any, place, yeah. any every place has an entrance and an exit. Yep. So. Um, yeah especially nowadays with this pandemic upon us yeah. um yeah companies business owners they want to be ready and have something in place so this so to be more ready you know yeah you are ready for what's coming yeah a lot of companies I, I know i have a few friends that um are working just with a thermometer at the front thermometer scanning events. people yeah scanning people to get in and they're paying them a lot of money to do that i mean this camera will replace that and be a a lot more cost effective yeah. for them yeah um okay well we're gonna uh, keep the questions coming we're gonna keep answering them uh thanks guys for joining us this webinar is recorded and it's gonna be on youtube right after this so we're gonna send this to all the guys that attended and feel free to forward this to anybody that you think will benefit from this information or you guys go, can go back and and um I'll watch it again Yeah, thanks guys again, and uh, um, we're gonna keep answering questions as we go. What a bit, let's well, we, scroll we, up, scroll up. Oops. Or down. Open this up right here. Okay. So. Does the temperature adjust for the ambient temperature of the environment? So that's one of the reasons why you have to get uh, up closer to the camera because it's detecting the body temperature from your skin. It's not the ambient temperature around. It's not picking that up. Okay. It's getting it directly from you. What kind of bit vegan does it use? So it's using uh, 26 and 31 are the two um, protocols that's using for it. Okay, so that answers two questions. Um, can can you have it do temperature at one time of the day and temperature face re recognition? Yeah, you can. So you at have another time. You have two schedules um, in each particular way of detecting things. Um, so you can set it up for sure. Yep. Okay. 
I'll scroll up a little bit more. The, uh, Oh, uh, does the pictures that you upload have to be a certain pixel or resolution requirement? They do. They do. Um, I don't have it on hand, but it, they do. There's a there's a certain requirement you do have to meet. Not only um, size, but like I said, when you upload the picture, you want to give it a name, underscore, and then the ID, and you don't have to enter any of that information when adding the people. It does it for you if you enter it in that order. Okay. Yeah. Warranty, uh, three-year warranty on everything Bolide product. So three-year warranty on this product also. How many faces? Uh, so it, I'll, um, it will handle 22,000 faces and 100,000 records. Yeah. Uh, I think it said, can you connect this to a regular monitor? No, so you have the screen in front. So that's basically your monitor. And then you have to log into the web yeah. GUI. There's no RCA out or BNC. Yeah, there's no RCA out or BNC to it. Um, I think we got all the questions. Let's scroll up. Let's look at if we missed any uh, other questions. Can you expand the SD card uh, local storage? No, you can't. So 16 gigs is a lot of storage for just faces. That's a lot. There's really no need to um, expand it because if you're doing recording, you can do it to a recorder or to your computer. So you really don't need to expand the uh, internal memory. All right, let's hold that. Can we record every questions? Do you have a video of how to do a quick installation and can you provide marketing PDF? Yeah, um, also we, we actually have a, a two minute YouTube video on setting this up with a mounting kit included, um, but it does not go through the uh, setup process. Um, this webinar here, we did the basic setup process. So uh, you can go back and watch this. Yeah, but you guys could always, Contact us if you need a more in-depth or yeah, we're more than happy to to walk you guys through setting this device up for the first time, especially. How does it behave in a semi-covered environment? Just so, like I said, it's going to detect it from from the skin, whatever your skin temperature is. Of course, you're running around for two hours, you're going to be a little warmer. That's why you set the threshold. The threshold is actually slightly higher than the average body temperature, which is 98.6. By default, you set to 90, 100, I think. So there's a slight, um, a slight cushion for that. All right, and that should be it. Um, looks like we got, okay. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, well that that answers, um, takes care of all the questions, I believe. So let's wrap it up. Uh, again, thanks guys again for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you on the next webinar. Any uh, more information you need for this product, feel free to Call us. You got you got our information here, or call your Bolide rep, and we'll get get it taken care of for you. All right, everybody, stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy out there. See you guys next time. Thank you.